fault. Um, they foundation stone for Waterloo Monument on the Glen Hill New Abbey. I count it to our journalists. The evening of the fifth presented so boisterous a storm of wind and rain that all hope of fled of any probability of the weather proving favourable for the performing of the uh, grand imposing ceremony of laying the foundation stone for this national monument. However, the morning of the sixth presented a calm and serene aspect. <coughs> Not a cloud obscured the, uh, uh, the fine, clear <coughs> expanse of the heavens and the glorious orb of the day burst forth in all majesty and splendour and everyone exclaimed, this is the son of Waterloo. Uh, at five o'clock in the morning, the signal guns announced the commencement of the fate while the shrill notes of the bagpipes were echoed from the rocks and glens by the trumpet of the bugle. Never did Pan in his native grove sound his wood notes wild in a sweeter strain. The village and company presented the most animated appearance. Every brow was enwreathed with laurel, every window decorated with oaken boughs, uh, and the houses connected with triumphal arches. At eight o'clock, the military <coughs> began to arrive, and shortly after, the different Masonic lodges. <coughs> the groups of ladies heightened the effect by their presence, and while their silted forms meandered <laughs> through the endless mazes of empowering shades, the softest music vibrated on the ear from every quarter. Such was the gaiety of the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Then the distant trumpet announced the approach of the provincial Grand Master and his wardens, who were received by the Guard of Honour. And after the ceremony of robing, the procession preceded the church in state in the following order. Two trumpeters mounted, party of Scots Grace, party of Dumfries Yeomanry, pipe major of the Highland Society, the Scots Thistle, supported by Rose and Shamrock, Military Band, Provincial Grand Master, preceded by Office Bearers and Wardens, numerous lodges, according to seniority, Military Band, <coughs> and Infantry, commanded by Captain Bailey, 92nd Regiment. The whole moved from church in slow time and as it passed under the triumphal arch, bearing the names Wellington and Waterloo, every individual respectfully uncovered. The procession continued to the foot of Glen Hill when it again passed under a magnificent arch, bearing the word Waterloo. And here, the spectators separated, and a trial of speed carried them up the rocky front of the hill, while the procession continued its progress by a more circuitous route. <laughs> and nothing could present a more fascinating and interesting appearance than the animated scenery at the moment. The roar of artillery reverberated through the mountains. The piercing tones of bagpipes echoed from hill to dale. The moorcock was flushed from his cot, and on reaching the brow of the hill, the procession was involuntarily arrested by the and the extensive scenery which lay scattered before them. On one <coughs> side, Criffle reared his giant head to the clouds and presented an effort of nature in her earliest and rudest form. Um, on the opposite, the mountain scenery of Cumberland closed the distant view, while Myth's proud stream poured her copious flood into yeah, yeah, Solway's fair and ample <laughs> the military having formed a circle around the foundation stone, the ladies were stationed in the ring. The ceremony commenced by an anthem, after which the provincial grand master, in the most solemn and impressive manner, laid the foundation stone. <laughs> 